Hi everybody, we're back today for another Pilates class. Today you're going to need a chair or something that's going to give you a little bit of balance because we're going to be doing some standing work. So whether it is a window ledge, a chair, a mantelpiece, but just something that's going to help you stay nice and stable so that we can work standing. You're not going to need it straight away, so we'll move it to the side. Um, I hope you're all doing good and uh, the bodies are feeling good as well. Today's class will be sort of intermediate to advanced, so if you feel that you have a few injuries or a few aches and pains or any issues, then just take things at your own pace. I will offer a few modifications um, for you if you need. So um, yeah, we're going to start standing. We're going to get a little bit of mobility. So I want you to bring yourself to the back of your space. So you've got the mat out in front of you. And then we're just going to start with a nice roll down. So take a breath in and breathe out to begin to roll down. So allow the chin to touch the chest. Allow the shoulders to roll forward and allow your spine to round. Now, when you're doing this, let your knees soften a little bit so you can fully lengthen through the back. Breathe in. And then as you breathe out, I want you to roll your body back up again. Think about restacking your spine. So from the lower back through the middle back, all the way to your upper back. Good. Same again. Breathe in. And then breathe out. Roll yourself all the way down. So let the arms get nice and heavy. And allow your body to relax into this lovely rounded position. And then roll yourself up. Feel the core muscles start to pull in to help you restack lower then middle, and then upper back. Good, last one, breathe in, and then breathe out to roll all the way down for me. And I want you to walk your hands out into a nice high plank position. So the hands come all the way out. I want you to bring your shoulders over your hands, and I want you to think about having your hips at the same height as your shoulders. So we're not letting the hips sag down like a washing line. You've got that nice lift so that the core is engaged. So you're gonna take your right foot to the outside of your right hand. So take a big step out with the right foot, and then you can either drop your left knee to the floor, or if you've got lots of range through your hips, you can keep your knee lifted. You're going to take your right hand, you're going to turn to your right and reach up to the ceiling. So you're rotating through your thoracic spine, and you're getting that lovely stretch through your hip flexor on your left. So thread the hand in under, turn left, and then reach the hand up, turn right. Now I want you to think about moving through the middle of your back here, getting plenty of rotation and trying to keep the hips nice and low so you feel the stretch down the front of the left thigh and maybe slightly through the back of your right leg as well. Just one more and then from here just bring your hand all the way back down again. Drop the knee to the floor if it's not there already and I want you to walk your hands back and just straighten the right leg and then bend the knee, push the hips forward again. So it's a nice dynamic hamstring stretch, sitting back and then pushing the hips forward. So you've got that toe slightly turned up, the hip is slightly open or externally rotated as we call it. So I want you to feel this a little bit more through the inside of your kind of inner thigh as you sit back and then, or sorry, as you push forward and then as you sit back through your hamstring. Good. And then from here, just take your hands back under the shoulders again, grip the floor with the back foot, lift the back knee, and then bring your right foot back into that high plank position and step your left foot out to the left side. Again, you can drop the knee if you need to, or if you've got the range, keep the knee lifted and go into your rotation again. So the left hand lifts and then it threads under into that gap between right arm and right leg. So keep pushing the hips through so you feel the length in the right hip flexor and so you feel that stretch in your adductor, which is the inside muscles of your left thigh. Push away nice and strong with your right arm so you're not collapsing into your right shoulder and you're getting lots of movement through the middle back. And then bring your hand down. Bring your knee down, walk your hands back a little, and then just sit back into that hamstring stretch. So I want you to reach from your hips rather than just rounding your spine. So send the sit bones back, bend the knee, push forward, and then reach the tail back. So as we're getting prepped for the session, we don't want to do static stretches and hold positions. I want you to feel that nice movement and trying to keep the body warm and get everything nicely opened up. Good. Okay, last one. Pushing all the way forward again. Take your hands out under the shoulders, back toe grips the floor, the knee lifts, and then you bring your left foot back, and in that position, just drop your knees to the floor. We're gonna do a little bit of movement through the spine here, especially focusing on pelvis and lower back. Upper back is still nicely kind of activated, so you're pulling your shoulders down away from your ears. You're keeping your gaze just past your fingertips, and I want you to think about doing a little bit of movement through the lower back and the pelvis. 
So you're going to stick your bottom out and notice how as you do that, your lower back especially drops into more of a dip. And then I want you to squeeze your bum muscles and round your lower back and tuck the tail. So you're getting that lovely kind of lengthening through the lower back and a nice tilt back in the pelvis. Good, stick the bottom out, reach back with your hips, find that little bit of extension in the back and then pull your hips forward again. So you try to create a diagonal line from your shoulders to your hips to your knees. Squeeze the bum muscles, core engaged. Good, you've got one more. So sitting back, allowing that bit of extension to come in and then pulling your hips all the way forward, tucking your tail, squeezing your bum. Now, when you're in this position, I want you to think about trying to drag your knees towards your hands, and it's going to create really active tension in your core. You're pulling the tummy muscles up and in, so you're thinking about drawing them to the spine, and shoulders are still down away from the ears. Now, from here, you're going to come into some press-ups. So I want you to bend your elbows and bring your chest down towards the floor, and then push away. Now, you're able to keep your elbows nice and close by your waist, so I don't want the elbows to wing out to the sides. And the other thing I don't want to happen is the back to start to collapse. So I want you to keep that tuck of the tail, tension in the core, tension in the glutes, so that we're stable through the spine as we do the press up. A lot of people when they do a press up, sacrifice a good spinal position. So brace through your trunk, strong through your core, strong through your shoulders and your triceps as well. If you feel really good today, know that the option is there to go to your full range press up, so you lift the knees, you straighten the legs, you bring your chest down and you push away, making sure that you're not sacrificing that lower back position. So just give me one more, work at your own pace and then I want you to push all the way back and sit into my shell stretch. So reach your hips back to your heels, lift your tummy away from your thighs and take that nice stretch. When you're there, just breathe in and try to spread kind of the space across the back of your body. So in between your shoulder blades, Feel that expansion in the back of the chest. And then exhale, just relax. See if you can creep your hands a little bit further forward now. The chest comes a little lower. And I want you to walk your hands over to the right hand side. So both hands reach right. Your hips slightly lean left. And you'll get a lovely big stretch down the left side of your body. So lengthening out from the lat muscle all the way down through the ribs into the lower back. And then just swap sides. So take your right hand across. Reach over on top of the left. And again, just pull your hips to the right so you feel that lengthening all the way down your right hand side. Good, come back through center for me. I want you to come back to hands and knees again. Before we come up to stand, I just want you to just hone in on that lower back and pelvis because it's gonna be really important when we start to move through the legs when we're standing. So I want you to focus on neutral, making sure that your back is not rounded, making sure that your back is not kind of extended. You're keeping the chest nice and open. You're keeping the hands spread on the floor. And I want you to think about lifting your belly button up and in. So from here, curl the toes in under, lift your knees an inch off the floor. So you're gonna keep your back nice and stable. You're neutral the whole time. You're gonna step your right foot back, step it in. Step your left foot back, step it in. Now if this is too much for you, you stay in just that hover position. If you're finding this is quite easy, what I want you to do is step both feet back into your full plank and then both feet all the way in. Obviously not at the same time. If you can do that, <laughs> you're going well. But make sure that you're focused on the back, not changing, not moving. So if I balance a cup of coffee across your lower back, you're not going to spill it. Good. One more. Out and in each leg. And then when you're all the way back in with your knees, just lift your hips up. Let your heels drop down to the floor and walk your hands all the way back in. Roll yourself up to standing. Good, so restack the body, come all the way up. Grab your chair. So we're gonna come into some work through the hips. This is gonna be challenging for the outside of the glutes and for your hip flexors as well. Challenging for your balance. But the most important thing when we're doing these exercises is that you're still stabilizing your back. So these are very much like the exercises we do lying on our side on the floor. Just a little bit trickier because you're standing. So the first thing I want you to do is take the chair to your left hand side. So chair just give me a little bit of stability. Your left foot is going to stay on the floor and I want you to make sure your pelvis is level. So I don't want you to hitch up through your right side here. Keep the hips nice and level. You're going to extend your right leg out to the side and bring it back in again. So all you're doing is a side raise. So if you think of the exercises we sometimes do lying on our side on the mat, literally just a lift and a lower. I want you to try and keep your torso over the top of your pelvis so you're not tipping. 
This is all about pushing that right leg away and trying to get it to come out to the side of your body. It's not coming in front, it's not going behind, it's just exactly to the right. Good. I also want you to be thinking about your core. So even though it's not directly a core exercise, your core is playing a big part in stabilizing you. So all the way from your ribs to your hips, other way around, <laughs> you wanna stay nice and still and strong. Good. You're gonna give me four more. You should feel the outside muscles of your hip working. Three. Perfect. Last two. Okay. Now on your last one, I want you to come all the way in and come into your knee raise. So the knee comes up the front in line with the hip, leg straightens, and then leg goes out the side. So that little combination of a knee raise and a side raise. Now I'm just going to turn sideways because there's something really important I want you to see here. When you do your knee raise, you're not sitting. So you're not allowing your lower back to start to slump and round. You're holding a neutral spine, staying tall, and when your leg goes out to the side, you're keeping that level pelvis. So yes, I want you to move your leg, but I don't want you to move your leg so much that it throws everything else off. So your back is in a safest, most stable position, and also the position that you can generate the most power from when you're neutral. So you wanna get good at holding neutral while other things are going on, whether it's legs moving or arms moving. Good, we've got four more. Lovely, last three. Perfect, for two. Well done. Now on the last one, I want you to come up and hold the knee raise. Now it's a very similar movement, but this time we're keeping the knee bent. You're going to turn the knee out to the side, bring it back to the front. So turn the knee out and the hip out, but don't twist. So I'm not turning my whole body. My pelvis stays still. So if I had headlights on those little bones at the front of my pelvis, they're shining straight towards the camera. They're not starting to turn off to the right. Good. Keep the knee lifted and focus on pulling the core in. Good. Okay, now if this is enough, you stay here. If you want to add a little extra, you're going to add the leg extension again. So when your knee's back in front, straighten the leg. When your knee's out to the side, straighten the leg. Now again, this is where everyone drops into lower back. So when you straighten your leg, don't sit back and join. I would rather you just brought your leg to here but kept a neutral spine than straighten the leg but sat down to do it. So you will feel your hip flexors start to burn. That's what I expect. But just make sure you don't start to sink through the waist or collapse through the back. Good, well done. You have one more each way, turning out. Well done, turning in, perfect. Now last one, turn out, hold it for me. Turn the inner seam of your leg to the ceiling. Give me little pulses, five, four, legs heavy, three, and two, and one, well done, have a rest, good. Give your leg a little shake. We're gonna stay on that right leg, so, you're gonna be balancing on your left, working through your right. I want you to come an arm's length away from your chair. So I'm just gonna move mine so I've plenty of space. Arm's length away from your chair. I want you to have a very slight bend in your left knee. So we're not locking this left knee out. A lot of people hyperextend the knees. So make sure that you keep that softness and the muscles are active around the joint. You're gonna bring your right knee through and then you're gonna lengthen all the way out into that single leg deadlift movement. So it's right knee up, and then you lengthen all the way out with your right leg. So I want you to remember what we chatted about with that lower back. So this time, instead of just flexing at the hip, we're extending at the hip as well. I want you to focus on squeezing your right bum muscle, and think about getting that length through the front of your right leg, and that stability through your core. We're not turning, so when your leg goes up, you don't twist your hips. So shine your right hip down to the floor, I know your left bum muscle is still working hard here because I did a lot of single leg stability already. So breathe. Keep the ribs and the shoulders square with the floor. You've got four more here. If you're very tight through hamstrings or if you have a history of back issues, don't worry about coming down parallel to the floor. Diagonal might be enough for you. Good. Last two. Well done. Now on your last one, I want you to hold it out. So the leg is nice and long. The right bum muscle is active. The left knee is soft. And we've got the core pulling up and in. So we're really focused on a braced trunk. Now from here, you're going to bend your right knee, bring it in under, under your body, and then extend the leg away. So you bend, and then you extend. Now the principles are the same. I want a stable spine. So there's no tucking. So just like when you were standing, I don't want you to round as your knee comes in, and then arch as the leg goes out. No movement in the back. Three left. Left leg on fire. Last two. Perfect. Now last one, just hold for me. I want you to pull your core in 
I want you to lower your right toe down, tap it on the floor, squeeze the bum, lift the leg up again. So it's a tap down and lift up. Pull the shoulders down and back away from your ears. Pull your belly button and your ribs up and away from the floor. Check your left knee is bent. We've got three more. Remember, height is not always better, so I want a stable spine. Last two. Good. Last one, you hold it, flex your foot so you're curling the toes to the shin. Little pulses. Five and four, three and two and one. Well done, stand up. Woo. Left glute should be working really hard there. That is totally expected. So bring your left heel over onto your right knee. Sit your bottom back and down. So I'm really reaching back through my hips and not rounding. So push the hips back and try and point your knee to the left. You'll get a big stretch through your left glute. You've got mead and your TFL muscles at the side of your hip there. So really important for your single leg stability, but they work like crazy. So let's go right side now. So bring your chair to the right. You're gonna be standing on your right leg and your left leg is gonna be doing the work. Now bear in mind your left leg has just had your body weight through it for the last five minutes. So it's gonna be tired. So just make sure that in your fight to do each movement, you don't start to throw your upper body or twist your hips. So. Hand lightly on the chair, pelvis nice and square, and then you start to lift, slide, raise, and back in. So out to the side, and back in. So all these muscles that we're working around your hips are so important, not just for your hip, but also because they help make sure that your pelvis is nice and stable, your core is all, everything's working in the right way, and we're not weak or unstable through this area. So kind of your trunk from pelvis right up to shoulders, such a key area to be strong through. Good, okay. Making sure that you're nice and tall. Imagine your head is floating to the ceiling. Keep your shoulders relaxed and don't hitch up through your left hip. So keeping the pelvis level. Good, start to add your knee raise. So your knee comes up the front. Leg straightens, leg comes out the side. Good, so as you're working here, again, you might find one side a little bit easier than the other. For me, I'm quite tight through my hamstrings on the left side. So when I bring my knee up, I'm definitely tempted to tuck. So I don't get my knee as far, but I'm really conscious of protecting the back and keeping that stable. So keep alternating side raise with knee raise. Good. You've got four. Perfect. Lift. Last three. Focusing on control and trying to breathe as well. Last two. Great job. Okay, my last one for me. Bring the knee up over the front and stay there. So if your knee's pointing to 12 o'clock, I want you to think about going out to 11 o'clock maybe 10 o'clock, come back to 12. So it's just that very mild turnout. It's not that I expect you to get your knee all the way out to 90 degrees. I want you to get good at stabilizing pelvis, moving in the hip. So obviously the hip and the pelvis and the lower back are all very closely connected, but the ability to dissociate every part and be able to use each part as designed is really important. Good, three more. Lovely, last two, stay tall. Good, now on your last one, you're going to start to add those leg stretches if you can. Remember, it's not about getting your legs straight, it's about stabilizing. So work as hard as you can, but don't sacrifice the lower back just to get your legs straight. I also want you to challenge yourself to go slowly. So a lot of the time I see people kicking the leg and using momentum. I want you to feel the work in your hip flexors and in your quads. Good, well done. You've got one more each way. So turn out. Good. Turn into the center. Great, I lied. You've got one more out to the side. Turn your knee out. Straighten the leg. Turn the inner seam to the ceiling and give me little raises up an inch. Keep the back long. Four and three and two and one. Well done. Bring your leg down. Give the leg a little shake and we're going to go into those single leg deadlifts again. So give yourself the space so that you'll be able to fully extend out of the back with your left leg. So you're about arm's length from your chair. Your right foot's in the middle. You've got that little tiny bend in your right knee. Remember this is a hinging movement from your hips. So it's all about reaching back with your sit bones and forward with the crown of your head. There's no rounding of the spine in this exercise. So a little bend in the knee and then begin. Hinge all the way down. And then bring yourself up, knee comes through. So don't worry if you're not getting completely upright, if you're keeping your hands on the chair. Obviously, the way to advance this is by challenging your balance and taking your hands onto your hips. Sometimes hands on hips can be helpful. You'll maybe notice I was doing that on the other side, just one hand on the chair. I like to bring my hands onto the lifted leg because I think sometimes it's very easy to start to twist. The leg can start to go behind the body 
rather than the hips being square, the torso can start to shift off. So imagine you're doing this between two walls in a really narrow corridor. You're not swinging left and right. And just check in with that right knee. So a lot of the time we lock into a joint and we're not actually using the muscles for stability. But when you keep that softness to the knee, you're asking yourself to use all those little muscles around the knee to keep everything nice and steady. Good, you've got three more here. Think about reaching through the crown of your head. Last two. Perfect. Okay, now last one, come out long and hold it. So just like on the other side, the back stays long, the knee bends, and then the leg extends. So there's no change through the back. You're pulling the tummy away from the floor. You're hiding the ribs away from the floor, and you're keeping your shoulders relaxed. Remember, I want your left hip the same height as your right hip. Good, you've got three more here. Squeeze the left bum muscle. Two more here. Good, now last one. Hold the leg out nice and long for me. Good, you're going to tap the toe down on the floor. Squeeze the bum, lift. Now remember, like I said, if you have a history of back issues, you can lift your chest a little bit higher and maybe only lift the leg slightly off the floor. If you've got the range, I want to see you horizontal. Good, three left. Right glute is on fire, but you're almost there. Last two. You've got it, well done. Last one, hold it, reflex the foot, pull the toes to the shin, just pulse it out to finish. Five, you've got it, four. Lift three, two, and one, well done. Stand up, take your stretch, right side. So give yourself a little bit of help by balancing the hand on the chair. Sit your hips back, try to point your knee right, and feel that stretch coming into the right side of your glute. So definitely would recommend these stretches, especially for those of us who sit a lot. We can get really tight through outside of the hips. So. Good little stretch to do if you're on your bottom a lot, sitting out of chair. Okay, you can ditch your chair now, so just take it out of the way. We're glad to know you don't need it again. And then we're going to come down and do a little bit through the mat. So bring yourself to the back of your mat again. Take a nice deep breath in, and then as you breathe out, roll yourself down. So just let your shoulders, your arms get heavy, your knees soften, and you walk yourself out onto the mat. And then when you're all the way down, just spin around and have a lie onto your back. So just rest yourself down and we're going to start off with some hip rolls. So I want you to take a minute to find a neutral position when you're lying on your back. So for any of you who've done class with me before, you will know your neutral spine means you have those natural curves that are meant to be in the spine. You're not pushing your lower back against the floor, but you're not arching your back up off the floor so much so you can slide your whole arm in underneath your back. So your belly button, your pubic bone should be level. There should be a very mild little gap just about the size that your fingertips can slide in. So relax your hands by your sides and we're just gonna do a few roll ups to get the core firing properly. So take an inhale breath. When you exhale, I want you to tilt your pelvis back and feel how your lower back comes towards the floor. And then start to peel yourself off the mat. So start to lift your lower back, start to lift your middle back and come all the way up and rest your weight across your shoulder blades. So spread your shoulders nice and wide, feel like your collarbones are opening up nice and wide, and make sure your weight is on the upper back, not the neck. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, you're just slowly relaxing and bringing the spine down. So literally one vertebra at a time, try to take your time here, and feel every part of your back get its turn to come down to the mat. And then roll all the way out, and find your neutral position again. Good, we're gonna repeat, so breathe in, breathe out to tilt the pelvis back. So what you're doing here, is shortening the muscles from your hips to your ribs. You're using them to pull the pelvis into that backward tilt. And then you're pulling yourself up slowly from the floor. Good, take a deep breath in at the top. And then as you let go of your breath, your spine slowly trickles down again. Think about trying to get that time, that space to come right down and lengthen your hips right to the back of your heels and relax there. Good, you've got one more for me, so inhale breath. Exhale, feel like your tummy is hollowing. So I want you to think about knitting the muscles of the core together. You never want to feel like you're straining or expanding or doming. So as you come up, it should feel like a belt is tightening around your waist. Hold this one at the top for me. You're going to do a few heel raises for me. So with your ribs nicely melting down into your body, I want you to lift up onto your toes. So your heels come off the floor. And then you lower your heels back down again. So as you lift your heels up, I want you to make sure your weight stays spread across all of the toes. So we're not rolling out towards the little toe. We're not collapsing in onto the big toe. 
we're lifting through the instep of the foot and we're keeping the bum muscles on as well. So a lot more going on here than you would think, but just because you're not working those muscles at maximum effort doesn't mean they are not working. So three left, controlling the heels down, two left, knees reaching out over the toes. Last one, hold it up for me. Now keep the heels lifted. I want you to let your knees fall apart so they're coming out nice and wide into your V shape. Your big toes are still on the floor. So as you pull your knees wide, the outside muscles of your bum should really start to switch on. I want you to try and lift your hips a little bit higher without arching your back. Good, and then bring your knees down to parallel and your hips lower to halfway. Your heels are still off the floor. Lift your hips up, pull the knees apart. Knees back together, hips come down. So as you lift up with the hips, really push them through, pull the knees apart. As your knees come to parallel, your hips lower down, your heels are still off the floor. You've got three more here. So really feeling the whole glute unit start to switch on. You've got three main glute muscles on each side, so you want to feel them all working here. Last two. Well done. Now, last one. Come right up. Hold the hips up really high. Knees really wide. Lower your heels down. Make sure your big toe is also on the floor. Lower both down with the knees wide. Lift up with the knees wide. Lower down. Lift up. Now, you can come right down until you're literally skimming the floor, but I don't want you to rest on the floor, so I don't want you to kind of offload your weight and take the tension out of the glutes. So a big part of the way we're training here is just that muscular endurance. So long sets, lots of reps. So don't take that rest and let the muscles switch off. You've got four, lower, lift for three, keeping your core engaged. Last two, good, now last one, come right up. I want you to bring your knees back to parallel. I want you to make sure your hips stay level and you're gonna bring your left foot off the floor. So your left knee is gonna bend and come exactly over your hip. Good, now hips are level. Your left leg's gonna straighten out until the thighs are parallel, and then the knee's gonna bend back in. So you straighten the left leg, and then you bend the left leg. Now focus on pushing your right heel really hard into the floor, so you're so conscious of your right bum muscle. You're mildly aware of your core just pulling in to support you as well. Now an option to advance this a little more, reach your arms to the ceiling. As you reach the leg out, reach the arms back. As the knee comes in, the arms come in. So you're lengthening your body, still stable through the spine. You've got three left here. Good, breathe for me, last two. Push down hard through your right knee. Last one, and then come back to center. Now from here, lower your hips down to skim the floor. Lift the hips up straight in the top leg. Lower the hips down, lift and reach the ceiling with the toes. You have three. All the way up, lifting that left hip really high. Last two. Right glute working hard. Well done, last one. Up and hold. Keep your arms up. Bring your left foot to the floor. Your right knee is gonna come up. We're straight onto that other side. So you're gonna extend the arms, extend the leg. Bend the arms, bend the leg. Remember, option to keep the hands on the floor is there if you need it. So left butt muscle picks up the work now. We're still balanced through the pelvis and we're not allowing ourselves to twist. Just make sure you haven't been sneaky with where you've placed your left heel. Make sure it's not in the center. So you want it in front of your left hip. So we're not going for a tripod. You're going for that lovely offset position so that you have to work through your core. Good, last three. All the way in. Last two. Good job, everybody. I know it's tough work. Last one. Bring your knee back in. Bring your hands back in. You lower your hips down. As you lift, you reach for the ceiling. Lovely active stretch through the hamstring. A little bit of work through that right quad as you try to straighten your leg. Good, go four, down, lift for three. Perfect, keep your right hip high, two. Well done, last one. Bring the foot down, bring the hands down. Roll your spine down, and then I want you to just let your knees roll to the right and roll to the left. A little release off through the lower back. Good, now we're gonna keep the tempo up here. I want you to come back to the center. I want you to tilt your pelvis back so your lower back rolls against the floor. And then I want you to bring your knees up one at a time. So when your knees come up, there's going to be a temptation to lift off under the lower back. Try to keep that lower back against the floor by tilting your pelvis back and scooping the tummy in. So we go for some toe taps. Right toe comes down, taps the floor, all the way back in. Left toe comes down, taps the floor, comes all the way back in. Good. Now I want you to remember that when you're doing this, number one priority is keeping your imprint. Number two priority is keeping your core flattening. So I'm not getting, I don't want you to do 
if you're doming, why I'm always going on about that, your very inner core kind of layer is a kind of muscle that tightens like a belt. So if you're not feeling like you're drawing in and the circumference of your waist is not feeling like it's getting smaller, then you're not switching on from that very deepest layer, which a lot of people do not do when they're working their core. So focus on keeping that lovely vacuum effect in the tummy. Remember to breathe for me. So as you lower the leg, you breathe out. If we feel good, we can straighten the leg nice and progress it on a little by lengthening the leg completely. Good. Remember the back. Remember the breath and relax your shoulders. You've got four. You've not got much to remember here, really, do you? <laughs> That's three. Good. Breathe. Last two. Super. Now on your last one, knees back to tabletop. Hands interlace behind the head and we work into the top of the core. Take an inhale, exhale. Tuck your chin, lift your chest and peel your shoulder blades off the floor. Slowly roll down. So big breath in, exhale breath to lift. Now yes, you're coming forward, but we're also going up. Think about trying to get your head to touch the ceiling. Think about trying to peek over your knees. Think about trying to lift and float up to the roof. Yeah, you've got three. Inhale, exhale for two. Draw the belly button down and in. Good, last one, up, hold it. So you're holding, you're gonna give me a little pulse. Up an inch, up an inch. Focus on height, use those abs. You've got five. Four, three, two, now I'm holding one. You thought it was over, unfortunately not. You're holding, you're gonna straighten right leg, pulse up a little higher, release back an inch knee in. Straighten left leg, pulse up higher, release back an inch knee in. So it's a lift the chest as the leg extends. It's a scooping in the tummy, light pressure with the hands, so don't try to pull yourself up with your arms. Good, you've got two more each side. Really finishing strong here, good. Focus on imprint, focus on breathing. Last one each side, lift and in. Last one, lift, in and rest. Well done, cross your ankles, grab your knees, pull your knees towards your chest and allow yourself that little rock left and right. Just release off the lower back. Find that lovely stretch and find your breathing rate. Come back down again, good job. Okay, I'm gonna bring yourself all the way up to sitting. So roll yourself right up. We're gonna stay with the core. So I want you to have your feet flat on the floor for me. So feet are flat on the floor, hands are gonna reach out the front. We're gonna do some half rollbacks. Now when you're doing these, roll is the key word. So it's a rolling away of the pelvis as opposed to hinging back. So we keep the body in that lovely U shape. Breathe in, breathe out to scoop and to roll. Relax your shoulders and then come right up to sitting again. So relax your front of your legs. Your feet should feel like they start to get light when you get back to that zone where your core starts to work. If you're not getting to that place, bring your feet a little closer to your hips and encourage your core to really pick up the work here. If you're like me and you tend to grip a lot through the front of your legs, I'd recommend a cushion between the knees, squeeze the knees together. It will get your inner thighs working, which complement the core, rather than getting the hip flexors to work which can sometimes take away from the core. Good. Now we're gonna to start to add a little bit of work through the side muscles. So you're gonna roll back, sweep to the left, left hand reaches back. Come up to sitting, roll right. Now I want you to watch your hand as it sweeps back. I also want you to make sure both sit bones remain heavy on the floor. So we're not rocking to one side, we're twisting from the waistline. Good, well done. That's it, so we're going a few more each side. We have one little bit to finish. Turning left, all the way up, turning right, come back to the middle. Now roll back, hold it for me, scoop the tummy in. Can you keep that curve in your spine? Lift right knee up, lower it down. Lift left knee up, lower it down. So one knee lifts and lowers, then the other knee lifts and lowers. Focus on pulling that belly button back, melting the shoulders down away from the ears and breathing. Good, that's it, four, perfect. Three, nice job. Two, get on the one, you hold one leg up, take a little minute, see if you can bring the other leg up. If you need to grab the back of your legs, that's okay. We're gonna go into our rolling like a ball, so check there's nothing behind you so that you don't either roll over it or squash it or hurt yourself. I want you to keep your chest and your thighs the same distance apart the whole time. So no tucking closer, no throwing the legs away. So we've got that space. We tuck the chin, we roll back, we come up, we catch. So as you roll, it's because you've got that lovely curve in your spine that you get momentum. If you have a flat back, you definitely need to work harder here. I want you to really pull the tummy in, 
to get that nice curve. If you want to make this tougher, take those hands off the side of the thighs. Challenge your balance, but just make sure on your way back up, you're not kicking the legs away and then following with the chest. Everything comes through together. You've got three. Lovely. You've got two. Well done. Now, last bit is super advanced, so hold it up if you can. Hands can either come on the side of the thighs or rest by the side of the thighs. See if you can straighten right leg, bend it, straighten left leg, bend it. Now, notice how I'm curved through my lower back, but I'm starting to lift my chest. Good. If you need the hands on the back of the thighs, by all means, do that. A little bit of help with the balance. This is an advanced move, so don't worry if you're finding it tricky. Maybe you just want to practice holding your balance. You've got four. Perfect. Three. Good. Two. Well done. Now on the one, grand finale, can you do both legs? Whether the hands are on or not, can you see if you can lift one arm off? Can you lift the other arm off? Can you reach up to the ceiling and push the chest through into that full teaser for three? Squeeze the inner thighs together. Two. And one. Well done. Bring your knees in. Have a little hug of the knees towards the chest. Little rock left and right again. Okay, you're going to come onto your knees for me. We've done a lot of work through the hip flexors today. So we did stretch them at the start of class, but we're just going to do another stretch for the front of the thighs now. So I want you to bring yourself down so you're sitting on your heels. I want you to reach your right hand behind you, so towards the right side of your body. Left hand reaches to the ceiling. You're going to squeeze your bum muscles, push your hips up, and also push out of your right hand and get that lovely arch at the back, but also a lovely big stretch in the front of your thighs. So enjoy that stretch. And then curve, lower yourself down, swap sides. Left hand comes down, right hand comes up, push the hips through. Squeeze your bum muscles again to open the front of the hips. And then lower right down for me. Come on to hands and knees, and we're just going to come all the way up to standing. So grip the floor with the toes, lift the knees up, push the heels back. Take a little second just to push away from your hands. So imagine you're trying to push your chest right back against your thighs. And then if you've got the range, you can take a little pedal where you bend one knee, you straighten the other. And then just walk yourself all the way up to standing. So hands come in. If the legs can stay straight, great. If they can't, do not worry. Everyone's range is different. Bring yourself to your feet. Okay, we're going to finish with a little bit through those legs in a squat position. Here we were. Okay, take the feet out so you are wider than your hips. Your toes are slightly turned out, so you're pointing to the two corners of the room. And you're going to work into a nice deep squat position here just because you've got that little bit more space between your feet. Start with your hands on your hips. And I want you to sit your bottom back and then start to bend your knees and sit back and down into your squat. Squeeze your bum, stand all the way up. So think about reaching back with the bottom, bending the knees to sit down, and then come right up. So if I turn sideways, if I was to really slow roll this movement down, the first thing that moves is the hips, then the knees. As I sit back, my knees stay out, they don't knock in. And my back stays lovely and long, so imagine I'm reaching back with my tailbone and projecting forward with the crown of my head. Good. Now you can start to add your arms here. When you add your arms, I don't want your arms to become a source of tension for your shoulders. So the arms are long, but they're connected into the back. So we're pulling down and back with the lats to keep that nice open collarbone. Good. Go four, squeeze lift. Go three, up, two. Well done, last one, hold it for me, stay down. Now pull your belly button in, hide your ribs from the floor. You're gonna give me a little set of pulses, down and up. Now as you work, don't let your knees fall towards each other. So as you work and pulse, think about the weight being in the heels, think about the thumb. Good, four, three, Two, you're going to hold the one. You're going to lift your right heel, lower it, then left heel, lower it. Right heel, lower, then left heel, lower. So keep that rhythm. Make sure your hips aren't moving. So the knee bends, the ankle is kind of moving, but it's not causing anything else to shift. Good. Got four, lift left. You've got three, lift right. You've got two, lift left. Now last one, hold your right heel up. You're going to pulse. So pulse with the right heel lifted. Hips are still center. Four, three, two. Now on the one, sit low. Drop your right heel. Lift your left heel. Pulse with the left heel lifted. Reach back. Don't start to come up. I know your quads are on fire. Four, three, two. Hold the one. Drop the heel. My last bit, I promise. Sit your bum down really low. Now I want you in that zone where you're almost hitting me. Your shoulders are nice and open. Your hips are down and back. Can you sink lower? Can you push your knees wider? My thighs are on fire. You've got five. Hold four. Three, two, and one. Stand up. Well done. Whew, hands by the side. 
and give yourself a little shake out through these legs if you need it. Just bring your hands onto your hips and do a few nice big hip circles here. So just move in nice and smoothly through pelvis, lower back and hips. And then just change direction. It's warm today actually, I think it's like 19 degrees, so I'm roasted. Come back to the middle and then just interlace your fingers, reach up to the ceiling and take a nice side bend to your right. Feel that stretch through the left and then just roll forward and come up the other side. And then just change your direction for me. So a nice big stretch, going left, pulling forward, coming up the right. And then just finish off, big shrug up the shoulders, big drop down of the arms. Do another shrug, lift up, relax down, and roll down to finish. Chin tucks, shoulders roll forward, and the whole body just rise and relaxes. So think about being like a rag doll for your top half. You're really heavy. Invite that little sway left and right. Enjoy some movement through the shoulders and the upper back. And when you're settled in the middle, then just give your chin a little nod yes, a little shake no, just to relax fully. Relax the muscles in the jaw and the face and the neck. And then a big inhale breath. Exhale to start to lift up through the tummy, start to restack through your spine. Roll right up to the top and relax the shoulders back. And done. Well done. Good job. Thank you so much for joining, everybody. Hope you find that enjoyable, helpful. Any issues, any problems, as always, just fire a wee email to us, give us some feedback, and um, we appreciate it very much. And uh, yeah, any questions, you can get in touch. So yeah, have a great Thursday, or if you're doing this at another day, enjoy the rest of your day. And hopefully we'll see you again soon.